Thank you so much for a great introduction. Uh, hello, already, uh, yeah, great afternoon to everyone. Uh, it's my great honor to speak here today and tell you something about uh, a successful story, a successful chapter of a, a conservation book that many of us are uh, writing together, I believe. So, Uh, as uh, was already mentioned yesterday during the film, if you were if you stayed uh, that long, and uh, as will be uh, talked about a lot during this afternoon, uh, the modern zoological gardens are a really crucial partner in biodiversity conservation, as uh, as was also uh, highlighted in the two, uh, 2019 Abu Dhabi call for global species conservation action by IUCN Species Survival Commission. And uh, yes, uh, modern zoos are really uh, necessary conservation uh, institutions that uh, pursue conservation not only ex situ, meaning uh, by breeding uh, threatened species in their care, but also by um, managing or by supporting or participating in uh, conservation projects around the world in the natural uh, area of threatened species. But as I said, uh, this will be the topic of today's afternoon, so I won't go any further. Yeah, great. Um, the Ostrava Zoological Garden uh, is trying to be a leading institution in this matter. And uh, uh, as such, uh, besides the introduction programs that uh, the zoo actively uh, participates in, it also supports uh, numerous conservation projects around the world. And there are um, nowadays 14 in situ projects that the zoo uh, supports by the two or um, lately already three uh, Czech crowns for wildlife. That means that uh, three uh, Czech crowns for, from every uh, ticket to the zoo uh, go to support um, these conservation activities across the world. And the main, uh, main, the flagship, uh, flagship uh, project uh, of the zoo is the Kukang Rescue Program that I'm here to talk about. And there are still some issues, so I think. Uh, so the Kukang Rescue Program uh, is a conservation program aiming at uh, elimination uh, of illegal wildlife trade in Indonesia, especially in slow lorises in the island of Sumatra, because. Uh, slow lorises, as you might know, um, are endangered animals. And in Indonesia, where we have two, uh, or oh, sorry, uh, in Sumatra, where we have two species, uh, they are very often traded. In fact, uh, slow lorises are among the most traded mammals uh, in Indonesia. And this is despite the fact that these animals are nocturnal and that they are the only venomous primates in the world. They are still being traded um, as a pet and also as a tourist photo props. So yeah, to just um, um, tell you more or to tell you where, where we operate in, uh, in Sumatra, it's the North Sumatra province, close to the capital city uh, of Medan in a village of Bandar Baru. And this is a good position for our activities as the Medan city is a main hub of uh, illegal wildlife trade in uh, Indonesia and uh, even internationally. So uh, here in the Bandar Baru village, we uh, created and uh, operate a rescue and rehabilitation center for slow lorises, which is the first of its kind in Sumatra. And here, uh, these uh, the animals, slow lorises, confiscated from the trade, from the black market, can be uh, can be treated and rehabilitated. Uh, to to allow for this, uh, we uh, had to cooperate with government agencies, but also, uh, on the other hand, uh, to allow for uh, enforcement of uh, wildlife protection laws, as slow lorises are protected both nationally and internationally. Uh, such a facility uh, was necessary. And as, as I said, uh, our rescue center is the first in Sumatra. And so before there was almost no way how to properly enforce the laws because the government agencies simply uh, didn't have a place 
uh, where to put the confiscated animals. Uh, as, uh, as part of our conservation activities, of course, uh, education and raising awareness is really, really important. And so we uh, created and uh, run an English environmental school in our village close to the center where the local children can, uh, can go and have English and environmental classes for free uh, in the afternoon. We also, uh, also hosted a uh, special uh, huge uh, competition in environmental speech in English for students from many schools in the region. But to allow for this, we had to create a great Indonesian conservation team. Uh, this here on the photo, you can see just a part of them. These are uh, so most of the people who work at the center in Bandar Baru, but we also have uh, a field team in our field area, um, which is located in the Karo Regency in uh, close to a Loiser ecosystem, which is a, a protected or very, uh, very uh, important uh, and precious rainforest where uh, four of the large Sumatran mammals can be found, the last place where they can found, be found, I mean, uh, the Sumatran tiger, orangutan, uh, elephant, and rhinos. So, uh, and this field area was chosen uh, to uh, allow us for a possible release of the reha rehabilitated uh, slow lorises from our center. Uh, we, we cooperate uh, with uh, local communities. We are trying to engage them in our conservation activities. Uh, one, of the, uh, one of the activity is uh, uh, building an English environmental library for local children uh, where they can uh, read uh, books in Bahasa Indonesia and also in English about nature and environment and see wonderful pictures because this is something which they usually miss in uh, their uh, school system in Indonesia. And these books were provided by an organization, Green Books. Well, another thing, very important way of engagement of community here was that we employed former, now former poachers of wildlife, especially of slow lorises and pangolins. So now they became our field assistants. Uh, and they help us a lot in field monitoring in the area. Um, we monitor the uh, area just to get to uh, know more about the wild slurries population there and uh, just to know if it is um, a good um, site for releasing our rehabilitated slow lorises. But of course, there are many, many other, um, let's say, rare animals and these uh, poachers help us, ex-poachers, sorry, help us a lot because they can navigate very well in the environment. Uh, another part of uh, community engagement in this area was uh, um, communication with farmers because as this village is located on the border of the protected rainforest, of course, many animals often um, visit their farms and um, eat their crops, let's say. And of course, this brings a lot of com conflicts. So uh, we um, communicated with uh, over 60 farmers. We asked them which animals um, they frequently see on their farms and uh, what they know about them. And based on these questionnaires and these questions, we, um, we created a special brochure in uh, Bahasa Indonesia, in English and in Czech about how to, uh, yeah, how to protect their farm against uh, animals without killing them or harming them. Because uh, many people just didn't know what these animals are, what they, how they can benefit from their presence and that they are not harmful and that they are also protected and for harming or killing them, they can uh, have many troubles. So this is just one page from the brochure, as you can see. A uh, very important part of it is uh, the part with uh, easy steps, easy tips, how they can deter the animals from their farms without harming or killing them. So uh, this is how I'm uh, approaching the main topic, let's say, of my presentation. And this is the Kukang Coffee Project. 
uh, that is, um, let's say, uh, the latest uh, latest uh, step in our community engagement uh, in Sumatra. Um, as I mentioned, uh, there are uh, we we cooperate with local people in Kutamale, and as uh, most of these people here are farmers, and many of them are co uh, coffee farmers. Uh, we decided to cooperate with them uh, based on the coffee production. And uh, because uh, many of these farmers produce their coffee in a not a very efficient way, they, for example, uh, pick uh, not, um, coffee beans uh, the, uh, or coffee um, uh, cherries uh, that uh, weren't ripe enough um, or uh, just um, process the coffee in a bad way. Uh, we uh, started training them on how to do it well. We also trained them uh, on how to produce their coffee uh, in an eco-friendly way without using any chemicals, uh, fertilizers, uh, chemical fertilizers and pesticides and so on. And within this task, we uh, we created a methodology of coffee production, so the coffee farmers know how to pick the coffee, uh, how to sort them, uh, the beans, and how to uh, dry them and peel them, and so on. And as you can see, maybe you recognize these three guys. These are the exporters uh, the ex poachers that we employed, and they are not only our field assistants, but also um, the main uh, protagonists of the Kukan Coffee project uh, who, um, uh, who oversee the, uh, the whole project. And this is how uh, Kukan Coffee community was created. Uh, you know, there are um, over 50 coffee farmers right now who entered this community. And um, the main benefit for them is that they have financial profit from the project, which means that uh, we buy uh, the coffee beans from them. Uh, we buy it for, uh, for a higher price than what they would get on the local market. And another bonus is that we uh, source the beans from them right on their farms. Uh, so they don't uh, need to uh, rent a car and uh, you know, drive to a uh, nearest village, which is quite, uh, quite far from here because uh, the Kutamala village is quite remote. So they uh, di directly financially benefit from the project. But on the other hand, uh, we also wanted something from this. And so uh, we made them sign an agreement that they uh, or uh, their families uh, won uh, ever, uh, ever hunt local protected threatened species again. Of course, they can hunt uh, uh, like wild boars, for example, uh, animals that are overpopulated in the area, but not protected uh, threatened species. So this means that by uh, supporting the community, uh, we, uh, we uh, are protecting the wildlife. And uh, I think that this, uh, this scheme is uh, very, uh, very, um, needed and basic in the conservation of, of biodiversity. You always need to uh, uh, need to involve the community to, to protect wildlife. Here you can see, yeah, there you could see just uh, two slow lorises uh, before uh, mating and a uh, pangolin mother with a, a pango pup, uh, which is quite, which used to be quite a rare um, picture, but now it's, uh, it's much more often. So, uh, well, uh, the year 2020 uh, was, of course, quite d detrimental to the whole world, and uh, many uh, biodiversity conservation activities were stopped or somehow uh, negatively uh, affected by the COVID situation. But uh, the Kukan Coffee project was quite successful that year because the first Kukan Coffee batch was created, was produced, and the green uh, coffee beans were imported to the Czech Republic. It was over 1,200 kilograms of green beans imported to the Czech Republic. And you might ask uh, where it was imported to. Uh, to use these, uh, to, to find a use uh, for these beans, 
a Kukan Coffee Cafe was uh, was created, was uh, opened in the Uski nad Labem city in North Bohemia in the Czech Republic, where people can support the project by just having a cup of coffee and uh, by, uh, and, and they can uh, get to know more about the project, about the slow loris or pangolin conservation or uh, about nature conservation as a as whole. In Indonesia, uh, let's give back to Sumatra, uh, in two, uh, uh, 2020, we built this special house supported by the um, Ministry of Foreign Affairs and uh, Embassy of Czech Republic. And this is a Kukan coffee house where the Kukan can be stored and processed, where uh, the farmers from the community can meet, and also where uh, the former eco library for children were uh, transferred to to have a better facility. Yeah. So uh, after 2020, uh, we can say that the Kukan Coffee uh, project um, um, uh, supported were, was supported by, by these activities. Children get education uh, in uh, ecology and environmental education for free. Uh, they, the farmers there don't kill wildlife anymore. And we, of course, employed poachers, so the poaching is already eliminated. Uh, we are uh, having still more and more farmers cooperating with our project and uh, from the coffee production. And so, therefore, they stopped uh, uh, hunting wildlife, which is ensured by uh, the um, by the ex uh, yeah by ex poachers uh, who oversee the project and uh, can really ensure that these people really don't hunt anymore. And the cherry uh, on the top of the cake is that uh, there's awareness and support from the Czech Republic, from the coffee and other places where you can find and buy these coffee. Oh, well, it's just the latest point in, in our activities, uh, uh, an important milestone uh, that could uh, mean a lot for uh, wildlife conservation uh, in Sumatra. It was a uh, Czech minister mission to Indonesia where the ministries of environment of the Czech Republic and Indonesia uh, agreed and signed a letter of intent on uh, environmental conservation and sustainable development. Uh, they visited the Kukang Rescue Center in Bandar Baru and uh, they highlighted the very nice cooperation and very important uh, cooperation between uh, NGOs in Indonesia uh, or active in Indonesia and Czech zoological gardens. Because, you know, this story was, could be possible mainly thanks to Czech and other European country, uh, sorry, uh, zoos. Uh, it's not only Ostrava Zoo and Olomo Zoo who were at the very beginning of, uh, of the project, but also other zoos joining. And uh, yeah, these, these zoos just uh, fulfill their modern role, which is conservation in situ uh, this way. So we are really thankful to these gardens. So I'm glad that I could introduce you the story of coffee that protects nature. So please taste the story uh, in the form of Kukan coffee that you can taste uh, right there uh, on our stand for free. And uh, I thank you very much for attention, and uh, if you have any questions, I'm available, available, and I will be glad to answer them. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kapesina. So, do we have some questions from the audience or online? No. So the only question reminding is where, when we are going to see more and more coffees opened with the Kukang Brew. <laughs> yeah, we're working on it. Uh, it's really nice that still more and more space, places are interested in, in sourcing the Kukang coffee. And uh, if you mean like a Kukang coffee franchise, <laughs> mm -hmm. we're working on it too. <laughs> But everything needs to take its time, so yeah. So how, how many places we can have the coffee nowadays? Well, uh, for taste. example, you can taste this coffee in uh, in Laura coffee stand in uh, Ostrava Zoo. It's uh, another coffee brewery who just were uh, who were so excited by by the idea of, of this Kukan coffee uh, 
project that uh, they agree to source the Kukan coffee and uh, offer it uh, along with their own coffee on their stand. So in Ostrava Zoo, uh, yeah, and maybe other zoos are still a little bit surprised. So I won't reveal, but they will be more, uh, yeah. Not right. even in the Czech Republic, but also uh, abroad. Cool. Thank you very much and good luck with your wonderful work. Thank you.